So what you'll need for this tutorial is an iPad Pro, I have a 12.9 inch, and an Apple Pencil. You don't need it, but it just makes it a lot easier. Um, and then you'll also need the app Procreate. So if you haven't heard of Procreate, it is an app on the App Store, obviously. Um, it's $9.99, like $9.99. It's a one-time purchase. It's not monthly or anything. And it's so worth it. There's so much you can do with it. Um, I'm just going to do this little tutorial as if you've never heard of Procreate. So I'll do some timestamps so that you don't have to listen to me talk about really simple stuff. Um, here I wanted to talk about, I did use Pinterest for these pictures just so that you could follow along and I figured it was the easiest to just do a board and you can go on my Pinterest and save all the pictures. I don't usually use Pinterest because it's very iffy, but in this case I'm doing a tutorial so I figured this would be the easiest way for you to follow along exactly how I'm doing it. Um, I hope that that's okay. So we're going to start off by adding a new canvas, or starting a new canvas, excuse my band-aid, you know I picked my fingers so I tried to hide it. Um, I'm going to do, I have a bunch of saved ones, but I'm going to do a wallpaper, iPhone wallpaper canvas. I think it's um, 1,242 pixels by 2208 if I'm reading that correctly. Um, so you can set that as your canvas on Procreate so that you can follow along with the right canvas. Um, we're just going to start out by doing some really basic um, things on Procreate just so if you're new to it you know what I'm doing and it doesn't get you off guard and you're like what is she doing? Okay so let's get started. We are going to click the little wrench tool to add in a photo. This is where you can do a bunch of stuff. Maybe I'll show you stuff later but for now we're just going to insert a photo. Um, if you can see it's a second little option so insert a photo and it'll take you to your photos on your iPad. I'm just going to show you how to cut something out, cut and paste with this little selfie of me. Um, not conceited at all but I'm going to click the little ribbon tool. That is the cutting tool so there's a bunch of different options. You can freehand, which is you can basically cut out any shape. It takes a little bit longer, but it is very handy. We're gonna use it a lot in this tutorial. You can also cut stuff out in a perfect rectangle or in ellipses, which is just a circle. Um, so I'm just showing you that here. So I'm zooming in and I'm going to show you how to use the freehand tool to cut out my um, body from the background. So uh, the little circle shows where you started and you basically just trace along the um, outline of what you want to cut out. So I'm cutting out my hair. This is very, very self-explanatory, but I hope that it could help someone. And I'm just going to cut myself out. So that is what I'm doing. And then also if you get to a straight edge or something, um, rather than trying to make it a perfect line, you can just click from the end of where you stopped to the point that you want to go. So you'll see in a second if I ever do it. So I'm just clicking from the last point I was at and it does a straight line. Just makes life easier. Another thing I wanted to mention that if you're new to Procreate, you probably won't know about. If you double tap like I just did, um, you'll see me do it again because I'll probably mess up. There, I did it. Uh, you can undo what you just did. So that's the beauty in digital art. With any type of digital art, you can undo your mistakes and you don't have to worry so much about messing up. It's so much more relaxing than regular art because you can undo anything that you mess up. <music> So I am finishing up here on my outline so you can just connect it back to where you started. You can see with the dot that is where you connect it to um, make a full shape to cut out. So you can see the line where I'm going to cut. <laughs> I'm just laughing at my own explanations as I talk through it. So if you swipe three fingers down it will take you to cut, copy, copy all, cut and paste, or copy and paste. What you want to do here is cut and paste because you have outlined uh, what you want to stay. So if you cut it, then it's going to cut you out and not the background. So when you cut and paste, it'll cut you out but keep the background. Oh. <laughs> and then you can go to your layers and you'll see that you have a layer separating you from the background. So um, you're going to want to 
delete your background layer so that you have just you. Um, so I'm just showing you how you can hide layers and um, show them again. So I'm going to delete that layer of the background and it's just me. And then sometimes, well most of the time, I will clean up the edges of stuff that I missed or just looks like kind of jaggedy or whatever, is that the word? And um, it makes it look a lot better. I'll show you that more later though. So I'm just going to delete the cutout that I just showed you because it's not actually what we're doing with the collage. Um, I'm going to choose this pinkish color. I can put the hex code below if you want to use it uh, so you can actually follow along, but you can just find a pink color. I'm using the round brush under the painting tools um, in the highest size so that I can just set that background layer because I want that to show through just a little bit when we um, layer stuff over it later on. So I'm going to lay down a grid texture using the grid brush. Um, just to have a base for the digital collage, I like that it peeks through once we start layering stuff over. So um, I'm going to use a little bit darker pink and just draw that on there. Okay, we are going to start adding in photos, so click the wrench tool, insert a photo, and we're going to put down the base photos. So I like to have some paper textures or some different, just different texture pictures as the bases so that they kind of shine through when we start putting like people or words on top. So I chose this, um, all these are on the Pinterest board so you can follow along, but I'm using the like paper texture, the water texture and or the water picture and then the shadow picture and what's the other one it is the other paper texture that's kind of darker so go ahead and insert all four of those and then we're going to move them around all right i have been trying to explain layers in procreate for at least 10 minutes now i'm making it really complicated basically it is the equivalent of when you're journaling and you want um, a certain picture or paper over another so in procreate all you have to do is hold down and drag it above or below the layer that you want it and um, it goes there so keep that in mind for later because it's going to get really crowded with all the pictures we're using and we want to um, change the layers up to make it look right so you're going to want to take the layer with the picture of the water and make it a little bit bigger and move it to the bottom right corner. Um, just wanted to mention that you obviously can do whatever you want with your collage, but if you are following along to this tutorial, then um, try to watch what I'm doing more than listen because I'm horrible at explaining. But next, grab your paper texture that's a little bit darker and crinkly and move that layer underneath the picture of the water. Next, you're going to want to select the layer with the palm shadow and make it a little bigger and move it a little lower than the center. Okay, so we're going to add a new photo. We're going to do the wrench tool, insert a photo, and then click on the picture of the ceiling with the angels. You're going to um, go ahead and move that layer above all the other layers so that it's on top. We want that one showing. So I'm going to put that in the top right corner and then I'm going to add in another picture. Um, with digital collaging, you're going to be adding a ton of pictures and just rearranging them. So add in that picture with the lips that says Alita, make it a little bit bigger, and put it in the top left corner. We're going to add another picture. It's going to be the um, Love magazine clipping this time. So we're going to have to cut this one out since there is a white background on it. Make it a little bit bigger and then use the ribbon tool to freehand and cut it out. Just wanted to add in that I accidentally hid my Lolita picture behind another layer, so it'll be back in one second. So just a quick reminder, go ahead and swipe down with three fingers to be able to cut and paste, and then delete that background layer out. You can clean up the edges that you missed, so if any white is showing with the eraser tool, and then I'm going to move that little paper scrap to the bottom right corner where the L, O, and a little bit of the V are showing. I am adding in another photo, this time it's a picture of the girl with the ribbon in her hair <laughs> I clearly don't know which one to choose. Um, I'm going to make that a little bigger and then move that layer to the top on top of everything else. So we're going to go ahead and cut her out again using the freehand tool. I'm going to try to speed this up because I think you get the gist. Once you have cut out your picture, you can move it up right underneath the Lolita photo. Um, we are going to make it a little bit smaller and then actually swipe down through fingers, copy and paste. This will give you a copy of the picture you just cut out. 
I really like this technique because it gives it a little bit of like 3D or just more dimension when it comes to the collage art. So just double up or triple up on people or objects. I think it's a really cool effect. Go ahead and grab another photo. This time it's going to be the girl with the blonde hair with like the big flower earring. This time I'm actually just going to cut out her face and then the flower earring. You'll see what I'm talking about right here, but go ahead and do that. I'm sure you know by now, but swipe three fingers down. I copy and pasted this time just in case I messed up and wanted to recut her face out. And then, as always, clean up the edges. So we're going to put her face at the top right corner and then insert the picture of the glitter. I want to make sure that the layer with the glitter picture is on top of the layer with the girl's face because we're going to cut it out. So if you see that little N on the side of the layers, if you click it, it gives you the ability to turn the opacity down so that you can see underneath. So go ahead and turn the opacity pretty far down so that you can still see her face. Even though the opacity is down really low, make sure you're still on the glitter layer because you're cutting out a glitter teardrop. Um, once you copy and paste or cut and paste, swipe three fingers down, you'll see that the opacity turns back up for that layer. So um, I really like this technique as well. Now that you know most of what we're going to be doing, I'm going to let the music play until something else comes that I haven't explained yet. So just enjoy that for a minute and follow along. <music> soon so insert another photo and you're gonna grab the little uh, Microsoft paint like aesthetic uh, frame I think it's super cute um, and then you're gonna insert another photo so grab the eye and that should be on top of the Microsoft paint layer so go ahead and resize the eye so that it kind of fits within I know it's not a perfect square but I'm gonna fix that in one second so we want this eye to look like it's like drawn in the paint frame. I think that's a cool look. So we're going to resize it and put it to the very left of the paint frame so that it's looking like it's fitting in there. I know there's some white space on the right side, but we're going to fix that. So um, select the paint frame layer and then instead of using the uniform tool, use the freeform tool and you can grab the right side of the paint frame and kind of scrunch it in. And you'll see what I'm talking about right here. Since we want the eye and the paint frame to look like it all came as one picture, we're going to want to merge down the eye onto the paint frame. If you tap on the eye layer, it'll give you a bunch of options, but you can click merge down, make sure the paint frame layer is right below it, and that will merge the two into one layer and you don't have to resize it and refit it every time you move the paint frame layer because they're put together. the black and white girl cut out and move to the bottom left corner you're gonna want to grab your glitter layer that you used earlier for like the teardrop and move it right underneath the black and white girl because we're gonna use it now um, also the opacity is probably still down so unhide that layer turn the opacity back up and then I will show you what to do next next I'm going to bring down that glitter layer right underneath her body because we're gonna kind of cut out a um, glitter shadow if you will so cut an outline right along her body but obviously a little bit farther out and then once you get to the bottom I am going to bring that all the way back up and connect it back to the dot where I started 
we can cut and paste and then delete the excess and then you'll see on the left side of her body there's still some extra glitter i'm just gonna go ahead and stay on that glitter layer and use my eraser to erase that out because i want it to be a shadow on the right side of her body we are going to grab the photo with the lips and we're actually going to triple it up this time like we did with the girl with the ribbon um so go ahead and cut that out and then i will come back to you go ahead and swipe three fingers down copy and paste and then we're actually going to play with the adjustment this time and turn the saturation down so that we can have one set of lips that are black and white so um, the little wand tool at the top you will see adjustments and if you go to hue saturation and brightness you'll be able to turn down the saturation and make it black and white. I am going to copy and paste the set of lips in color one more time because I want three in a row. I am also going to adjust the layers of the lips because I want the first set to be on top of the second and then the second on top of the third. We're also going to merge down the three layers of the lips because we want them to be all in one. We don't want to have to readjust them every time we move them. We're also going to make them a little bit smaller, move that layer of the lips on top of the black and white girl, and then put that on top of her. I'm just cutting out the star from this wallpaper. We are going to use three of them, but do not cut out all three. That is too much time. You can just cut out one and then copy and paste the rest. So once I have cut it out and cleaned it up a little bit, then we are going to copy and paste. Go ahead and bring that star over to where the grid is showing through by the black and white girl. And then we will copy and paste two times. So we'll have three stars all together and just watch how I rearrange them because I had to rearrange them a few times and do it like that or however you want. As I'm rearranging the star layers, I'm just going to drag one of them right underneath the black and white girl layer um, just so it looks like the stars are kind of in the background. So we're going to import the UR art picture. We're almost done, I promise, but we're going to make it a little bit bigger, cut them out, and then merge them all down so it's one picture. I'm not going to show you every time I cut it out because I think you get the gist, but I will come back to you when I'm done with that. Like I said, I'm just going to merge down each word so that it's easy to move and then put that right beneath the eye. Something that I really like to do um, with the pictures that have like a really blunt edge is erase along the edge of them so that it looks like it's kind of ripped. Um, this is not necessary by any means, but I'm going to do it on some of the more straight edges. So I'll show you how I do that and then I'll also um, grab the white technical pen and then just um, draw along the line up that I erased so that it looks like it was kind of ripped. If that makes sense again this is not necessary by any means but you can do it if you don't like the blunt edge another thing i really like to do to add a little character to my collages is to add some paint streaks so i made sure to add a layer on top of where i wanted to add them just in case i messed them up and i wanted to delete i am using the old brush um brush <laughs> the old brush brush and i'm gonna do a few different colors of like mauve or like blush pink so just do like some dry brush strokes and i think it looks really nice a 
again I'm just getting rid of some of those blunt edges of the pictures right here so again you don't have to do this I just said again like three times but you don't have to do this step it's just something that I like to do so we are finally putting the last picture in can you tell I'm kind of done doing this voiceover um, bring that last picture uh, to the very top if it's not already over all the other layers it's just some a really nice poem by butterflies rising um, so we're just gonna cut out like the pieces so that it looks like three little stickers if that makes sense so when we use the ribbon tool this time to cut we're actually gonna use the rectangle instead of the freehand so that we can cut out each little square of or I guess rectangle of the poem um, so go ahead and cut out the first line the second line the third and then also the author Once you have each piece of the poem, we're going to rearrange them individually to fit on top of the picture of the palm shadow. Um, I need to make them a little bit smaller because I made them too big, but that is what I'm doing here. Okay, I was wrong. This is actually the last picture that we're putting in, so go ahead and grab the little... Um, graphic that says maybe I lied when I said I was okay cut it out paste it you know the drill um, I'm gonna clean up the edges and then I will come back to you alright we are finally finished I'm so excited I really hope that you enjoyed this and that you followed along if not I understand it was way too long um, right here I am merging down all the layers because I'm going to show you how I kind of make them all flow together in a second so just merge all the layers down so you have just one Alright, so if you like your collage as is with no noise or any other um, steps, you can go ahead and save. So to save, you can do the wrench, share, and then save it as a JPEG or PNG and then airdrop it to your phone for your wallpaper. If you want to add some noise, I really like adding noise. It's basically like TV static for your pictures so it just makes it all flow together better that's why um, we merged all the layers together because then we can do the same amount of noise for each picture and it all kind of flows so i'm going to slide to adjust to around 20 percent but before i stay on 20 percent, i'm going to show you really what noise is so you can see that the static is kind of going up on all the photos and it kind of makes them look like they all belong together rather than just random placings, if that makes sense. I am just gonna airdrop the wallpaper to my iPhone and then I will show you what it looks like um, actually as my wallpaper. But that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.